All right, YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, TKK, man. If you haven't seen my video I posted this morning, check it out, please. I'll put a link of the video in the description. I'll go ahead and card it in, too. So today, I was just pretty much talking to you about, from my perspective, what I feel you should be looking for if you are buying a TV. Nothing too elaborate with there. It wasn't like a guide or anything, but just some real talk. You know what I'm saying? From now and again, I feel like, you know, I just like to get on here and I like to talk for real about the TVs. And so today, this video right now that I'm recording, and you're probably going to see this before the night is out, I want to talk to you guys about this Samsung S95B. So I've had this TV from the beginning, not new to this, um, got it at 55 inch. And I feel like I want to answer a couple of questions that I have received over the last week, because I pretty much started off this week of return, returning my uploads first talking about the Sony A95K because I'm really excited for that TV. And within that video, I ran into a couple of people, which I totally am okay with the comments, right? But more or less just kind of questioning like why you would want this TV if, you know what I'm saying? Or that TV if you have this TV. And, you know, as I said, I'm not one to live through others with reviews. So I'm not gonna babble, I'm gonna roll my intro we're going to get into talking about this Samsung S95B and what I don't like about this TV right after this. As I said, welcome back to the channel, man. Make sure you guys like, leave a comment so we can have a dialogue. Go ahead and type away so we can speak, you know, a heart, a thumb up and I comment pretty much to anybody that I see. Listen, I love this TV. So let me just let me just keep it a buck. This TV is a great TV. It's, it's one of the baddest that you can get on this planet uh, right now to date. It's um, the most innovative when it comes down to just everything I'm looking at, even just the colors and such. Um, they've done an amazing job with this technology, Samsung pioneering something. And this is what they, they do this a lot. Like they do this a lot. You guys just don't understand, man. I was such attached to Samsung years ago, 2014, 2015, was just buying into everything that they had to offer at a flagship level. I wasn't buying anything entry level. I think I got a, um, we got the 32 inch cheap TV for free when I bought the JS9500, it was a promotion, but that was pretty much like the cheapest Samsung I had got or even considered looking into, you know what I'm saying? So um, I love what they've done with this thing from a perspective of how they are able to illuminate and give you the brightness in the areas. There's just a lot of good details to that. Um, the colors are really nice. They're different, right? And I said this in my other video, we gotta get away from saying that they're not real. We gotta get away from saying things like they're fake. Cause none of these TVs, like there's not one TV that looks exactly like real life. I'm sorry, there's just not one. I know, I understand that there's there is a, a, a look to the Sony TVs that will give you more of what a director's perspective is, but I've never been able to really look at a TV and feel like this is really life. It's always, in my opinion, have been like, it looks better than life. And that's why the demos, they pop so damn well, especially with this TV. So let me tell you the first thing I don't like about this TV, and really it's the people, because Samsung doesn't hype this TV up a ton. Like we understand what it is when they did their, their, their unveils of the TVs and they were doing the national showings like on the internet with the TVs, they were talking about this technology being great and that other partners will buy into it, such as Sony. I think the people are really what has this, this stigmatization and this, 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 this just overall godly effect to this TV. It's just like this TV can do no wrong. And that bothers me. It just, it bothers me so much because, you know, the, the same people that I see or seen, let me say that because prior past tense, like just absolutely praising LG for this, that, and the third, the amount of consistency, the track record that they've had, absolutely talk about OLEDs like it's just not a good technology as if there's absolutely no value. And it's crazy to me, right? So when you get past the people, the first thing I don't like about this TV is the build quality. Now, I'm not talking about designs because I went back and forth with this one person. I don't even remember your name. If you're subscribed, thank you for the support, but you gotta know I'm gonna keep it a buck. You, 
you're ignorant. You don't understand what you're talking about, okay? Ignorant in the definition. Not saying that to be disrespectful, but you're ignorant in the in the sense that you don't understand what you're talking about. This guy's going on and on about how these TVs are built physically perfectly. And I'm like, what is this guy talking about? Do you own one of these? I can't think of a person that hasn't bought one of these TVs that doesn't have like a radical noticeable bend to the TV. And that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That is a problem. That is exactly what I think Sony is probably going to be avoiding. Um, person behind the camera will agree. My TVs had bins in them and noticeable bins. That is a problem. When you are looking at something so innovative, you have to go beyond just the oohs and the ahs. And let me be real with you guys. It will take you. It will take you about a week and a half. No, I'll say this. It'll take you about 27 times to see this TV for you to not be like, oh, because it's that freaking amazing looking. Listen, I'm going to keep it real. It's that amazing. You will have to see this thing about 30 times before you're like, OK, I'm used to it. Right. It looks that good in person, in home. If I can, I will pull and, and, and phase in at some point my initial reaction to this when I first seen this TV. Mind you. I had it before it was in any showroom. So I didn't go to a store like a lot of you guys and see the fictitious demos. When I first seen it, I had an actual console hooked up to it, out of the box with game mode on, vivid settings. And it was just, it blew me away the way the res looked it was just phenomenal, man. Okay. It was really, really good. Um, outside of that though, you are met with initially an imperfect operating system. Tizen has never been something that I've been a fan of. And I've used, I've used Samsung's with Tizen operating systems for a long time. They've had their own proprietary system. And to me, they are second class to both WebOS and Google, that app uh, that the Sony TVs use. Those operating systems, in my opinion, they just function a lot better. I actually think the Google probably is the best because it's more open source. You can do things like emulation and so forth. Uh, but I do think that ultimately the web OS works the best. I just think that everything that they integrated from the LG side on their smart functionality just works better. Now, I know they made some updates on this to a lot of different resolve to those problems, but the operating system is still clunky. It's just, it's not simplistic enough. It just seems like it's, it's a really forced experience where they're just trying to captivate and cultivate this experience of these blocks. Kind of reminds me of like Windows 8. If any of you guys are like PC guys out there, you know, you had Windows 7 that was just super simplistic platform that worked. Then they forced this Windows 8 on you for the surface like a tablet and they went back to 10, which kind of simplified things again. I just think that they need to completely send an update where you can just customize and simplify the operating system because I think all the blocks and the grids just just it, it really makes it clunky. I think that's a part of it, but who knows? Um, let me face forward so we can get some more talking points. Damn. Shit. Dog, like. <laughs> Damn, this motherfucker's smoking, man. I ain't gonna lie. All right, got some Resident Evil play going here so I can finish my talking points. I got my son playing this game. You can go ahead, son. Yeah, so, man, listen, this is what I like about this TV. Everything looks pretty pristine. I, I can't say anything bad about the, the quality of picture, skin tones, reds. Reds are my absolute favorite on this TV. I don't think I've ever seen a TV that represents reds so good. Like, truly, I have not. Um, and so that's what I love most about it. Let's turn this volume down just a little bit. All right. He took that approach. Me, I would have ran behind. <laughs> All right, yeah, but well, like I said, guys, love the TV, man. I just, I hate the commentary around this TV. All the drama and the, the, the disrespect that people just 
you know they just get in the way about this tv and it's just man it's crazy like people just i know ultimately it just comes down to folks wanting to force what their preferences are on one another and i'm not a fan of that never been a fan of that that's why i made the video earlier telling you guys hey man whatever you want go after it get what you want man this looks amazing though good goodness Her jacket in that car, that red truck. Like the red, like I said, red is the best on this TV, my opinion. Some people might think it looks oversaturated. One person did ask me a question about my settings on this TV. I cannot answer any movie settings. Filmmaker apparently got an update. I know I did update the TV. I'm functioning on the latest firmware. I have no interest in watching movies on this TV though. Which again, another reason why I wouldn't like it in that regard is because it's not large enough. This TV is not large enough for me to want to replace it. It is only large enough for me to focus on utilizing it as a gaming TV and that's what it is. This is a combination to my 3090 Ryzen 9 processor build. So yeah, no movies been played on it, no TV shows, it's just, it's not an interest I have, um, but my goodness, it does look great. What you think, son? <laughs> that junk looks crazy, man. Listen, we've been using OLEDs forever, man. We've been on it. I have been on it. Now, does this look like the best TV I've ever seen? Ah, oh, man, it's hard to say. It, it really is, you know, just because... It looks like a Samsung TV. I'll say that. And that's with no malice. You know what I'm saying? I think you have to have you have to have a history of having some flagship Samsung TVs in order to know what I mean when I say that. Um, you know, it's just like I said, ultimately, it's just the people in the community and the way this TV makes people feel like as if they own it, then their their knowledge is just everything. These same people two years ago, I won't say last year, but two years ago, you know, their whole their whole take on everything was that OLED was where you needed to be. And I understand that this is a newer technology, but you've got people telling me that the Sony TV is not going to be good at all. Like at all. It's not going to be good just because of the oh, you got bit just because we. Um, we have reviewers out there that may have the TV and, you know, are probably saying that it's not as bright as this TV. Personally, not the reason why I'm buying that TV. I'm buying a Sony because I want what I'm going to think is going to be the best bedroom TV because that's where it's going to go. After I get that TV, I'm going to put it where the 77-inch C1 is downstairs. We're going to review it. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to get it calibrated. It's going to get professionally calibrated. I'm probably going to get a 1,000 watch hours on it downstairs, and then I'm going to bring it to the bedroom after it's been calibrated. So, yes, I am definitely excited for the Quantum Dot. OLED from Sony and I'm hopeful that it's going to come with a much better build quality physical build quality than this TV because this TV went through three different options to get one that had a flat panel that wasn't bent you know I don't know many of you guys have been in my comments telling me this I had a conversation with one guy that told me he returned like four of them and that he was tired of returning them he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to feel bad doing it to his store local store that had it but I told him I'm like man nah, return it until you get the right one so these are just some of the things I don't like about this TV. Um, I do love its performance in terms of game mode. The input latency is great. And I've said this before, and I will say this again when I get ready to finally do my full review of it. But let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comments below. If you guys got any questions about it, let me know. If you got any suggestions, recommendations, if you're a vet with the TVs and you want to talk to the community, let them know what you think is great. I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Max love.